Throughout history and the centuries, there have been some truly harrowing execution methods used to condemn someone. Inside of England there was hanging, drawing and quartering, in which each step of the execution was worse than the one previous. It resulted in someone being cut into four pieces, with these parts then being sent to different cities to be displayed. This was the fate that Scottish rebel William Wallace suffered, the man who is remembered as Braveheart. But the British had many sadistic execution methods that they utilised across the years upon their enemies. Some of these were done very publicly to strike fear into the hearts of those who they conquered and were reigning over. The aim of executions was to deter others from committing crimes and to keep them under submission. But inside of India, there was a truly devastating execution method used in which someone was literally blown from the end of a cannon and was shot into many different pieces. This has to be one of the most terrifying methods of execution used throughout history. Join us as we look at blown from a cannon executions, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The execution method of being blown from a cannon or a gun is one which has been around shockingly for a lot longer than it was used by the British inside of India and other conquered lands and territories. It was used by the Portuguese during the 16th century, when they rampaged throughout different lands and conquered them, and also Mughal rulers and local leaders used against people who they believed would be a rebel and would rise up in defiance against them. The Portuguese explorer, Francisco de Almeida, shot many people from guns during his different conquests as he would try to keep people from committing different offences. For example, his men were so appalled by one woman turning to cannibalism that they blew her from a gun, despite the local outrage about this. They believed that literally seeing someone be shot into many pieces was enough to subdue resistance, and they were probably right in this. But the British rule in India was oppressive, and it was used as an execution method against Indian people, who were being kept in submission by the British. When the British Empire is taught in schools across the nation, it is strange that this part of the empire is actually omitted, and there isn't too much taught about the brutal ways that the British kept people down inside of the country. I personally, when I worked inside of secondary schools as a history teacher, was instructed to focus on more what the British brought to different lands, and there was little to no directive to focus on the crimes of the occupiers, such as shooting from cannons. Blown from a cannon was used to punish Indian sepoys who were helping rebel causes, or who had been discovered defecting to this, and these were deemed as worse traitors to the British Empire. The execution method was, as it says in the name, an unfortunate victim would be tied and secured to the end of a barrel of a powerful cannon, and then in some cases grape shot would be used to fire through the condemned, but usually blanks were used to fire through. This led to a huge explosion and implosion of the victim, and their remains would be blown into thousands of pieces. It was truly harrowing, and there were even many complaints and injuries caused by the execution, as the bones of the condemned would splinter and shatter, and these almost acted like sharp arrows that would embed into the skin of those who were gathered to watch. It was certain death in the most awful way, and there was absolutely no chance of surviving, as guards armed with their rifles would prevent this. This was done rather frequently upon suspected rebels, to the point where birds of prey inside of towns and cities even learned that they would soon get a feast on the remains of someone who had been shot from a cannon. They would circle before and then after the cannon went off, swoop and then feast. Even stray dogs ate the remains of people. Some of the eyewitness accounts of this execution were terrifying. One man who saw this method used said, The prisoner is generally tied to a gun, with the upper part of the small of his back resting against the muzzle. When the gun is fired, his head is seen to go straight up in the air, some 40 or 50 feet. The arms fly off right and left, high up into the air, and fall at perhaps a 100 yards distance. The legs drop to the ground beneath the muzzle of the gun, and the body is literally blown away altogether, not a vestige being seen. Another witness stated that, One wretched fellow slipped from the rope by which he was tied to the guns just before the explosion, and his arm was nearly set on fire. Whilst hanging in his agony under the gun, a sergeant applied a pistol to his head, and three times the cap snapped, the man each time wincing from the expected shot. At last a rifle was fired into the back of his head, and the blood poured out of the nose, and a mouth like water from a briskly handled pump. This was the most horrible sight of all. I've seen death in all its forms, but never anything to equal this man's end. 
As mentioned, it was not just an execution method used inside of India. As one man who saw the method being used inside of Afghanistan recorded what he saw, and he claimed that the three men were tied with ropes to the guns, their backs against a muzzle. The rope fastened to one of the spokes of the wheel, passed with a knot round the arms, over the muzzle of the gun, round the other arm, and then to the spoke of the opposite wheel, which kept the body fixed. The British borrowed and made a few alterations with the execution method, and the East India Company used it to execute those accused of stealing from them to deter others. Those involved in protesting could be subjected to this, as in 1806 the law mutiny led to the slaughter of a number of British officers and soldiers during the night, and also some sepoys were killed in this. But the reprisals against locals was ruthless, as six captured men were blown from cannons, and with more uprisings planned, there was even more bloodshed. There were some people who were forced to watch others being blown from cannons before they would be subjected to it, but in 1784 one regiment inside of India rose up in a pay dispute, and there were 12 men who were blown from cannons for their insubordination. 11 of the men were executed in this, but the 12th man was actually spared, as a cannon blew out three times when it was to be fired, and the officer in charge of the executions took pity on this last man, and decided to give him a reprieve, as he had witnessed the executions of 11 of his friends and close allies. He was literally cut from the cannon, which was all ready to be fired. But it was a widespread execution method deployed across India to stop uprisings and rebellions against the British. It was claimed that in 1857, on the 8th of June, two sepoys from the 35th Light Infantry were blown from guns. 10th of June in Ludhiana, Peshawar, some 40 of the 54th Regiment were blown from guns. On the 13th of June, 10 sepoys from the 45th Regiment at Fezapur were blown from guns to hanged. The same day in Ambala, 10 sepoys from the 54th Regiment suffered the same fate. The 26th of the same month, in Aurangabad, one was blown from a gun, one hanged, and three were shot. On the 8th of July in Jhelum, it's assumed that captured rebels would be blown away. On the 19th, Aurangabad, one was blown away, two shot. On the 5th of September, Satara, six were blown away. On the 17th of September, Multan, one was blown away, 121 were summarily executed. On the 23rd of September in Karachi, one was blown away, seven were hanged and 20 deported. The local body count on court-martial individuals then came to four blown away, 14 hanged, 22 deported and three beheadings. At the end of October, in Okhilihand, near Agra, one was blown away. On the 16th of November, Bombay, two sepoys from the 10th Regiment were blown away. It was an execution method which aimed to terrorise the population, as well as condemn the victims who were tied to the end of the cannon. There are accounts of this going wrong, as someone may have slipped from the cannon slightly, and this resulted in even more harrowing results. It is a dark part of the British Empire's history that is, as mentioned, rarely spoken about, and it is important to remember the blowing from cannon executions, as it shows the horror that the British military and rule brought to different countries. Spare a thought for those people who were dragged out to witness this form of execution also, as body parts from the condemned were flung high up into the air, and shards of their bones flew in different directions. It was completely disturbing, and is an execution method which has been left in the past. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.